There are two simple goals to run a successful suckler herd. One, to ensure the cow produces a calf every year. And two, to ensure that she produces a top quality calf that's going to attract a premium price in the marketplace. These two goals are key to ensuring that you achieve a high level of output and ultimately a high level of profitability. In this piece, we're going to be looking at how you can beef up your breeding. So, we have two key objectives. One, the cow produces a calf every year. And two, she produces a top quality calf at weaning. Having the right type of suckler cow is critical. For me, the ideal commercial suckler cow should bear a similar resemblance to a Dublin bus. If we look at this cow here, like the Dublin bus, she's got a good deep body, she's got a good square back, essential freeze of calving, and a good wide pelvis. And again, similar to the Dublin bus, she's got a good wide back end. She's a nice tidy udder, and as we can see, she's good on her feet. We're now going to go and meet the owner of this, this cow, Arthur Braden from Progressive Genetics. Arthur, how are things? Justin, how are you? This guy's the proof of the pudding, Arthur, as they say. Exactly, Justin, yeah. Like, he's, he's a, a Belgian blue calf from a, a limousine cow. The cow is bred by Epson, going back to a ULE cow out of a cemental cross. Um, that's a, a DEP calf, and as you said, Justin, he's the proof of the pudding. He certainly is. Arthur, I gave my views earlier on on the ideal suckler cow, and I know uh, suckler cow breeding, everybody has their own views and their own objectives. Uh, would you just maybe run through this here, Kai, like what you think is the ideal suckler cow, or what you're looking for in a cow? Well, I guess by extension what you said, Justin, she's a good average run-of-the-mill cow, good length to her, nice deep body, good bone under her, plenty of milk, as you can see, obviously, she reared a, an excellent calf last year, nice bit of length to her, as I said, plenty of milk underneath, so to me, she's just, she's a good average run-of-the-mill commercial cow. Given the current trends with the Italian markets, um, it, it's, it's taken up a lot of our, our live exports at the moment, and I think he's uh, an excellent specimen that's suitable for the Italian trend. What would it take to buy him, Arthur? A hell of a lot of money, Justin. <laughs> well, I hope you get it. Thank, Thank you very you, much, Arthur. Obviously, having the right type of suckler cow starts with selecting the right type of heifer. For me to give prescriptive advice on which type of heifer you should be selecting for breeding is difficult because it will depend on your own farming system. Arthur, this heifer you have here, uh, I suppose it comes back to what we looked at earlier on in terms of the red limousine. A good square heifer, maybe if you just want to th run through a few of the pros and cons with this lady. Well, she's bred by, again, another maternal tested bull, Justin, a French bull called Hymore, who uh, we had available through Progressive Genetics for many years there. Um, a bull that was, uh, a trait he had was given to improve stature. Now her mother unfortunately is no longer on the farm. She was an old short horn cow and she was a very low little cow. Mm -hmm. um, this heifer here has just gone two years old. She's calving in October. So as you can see, like the, the, the bull has certainly done, he does what it says on the tin, I believe. It'd be the type of heifer you'd be recommending as supposed to a, uh, a part-time suckler cow farmer that's going to be going to his work at seven o'clock in the morning and maybe not back to the evening. Well, certainly, Justin, I, I, I would say you're correct in what you're saying. Um, as you said, a good deep heifer, a nice sweep of the rib, good plates on her, good quarters. Um, the limousine is a very popular maternal dam, so I would certainly agree with what you're saying in your assessment of her. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at the, the, next, uh, the next line-up, Arthur. No problem, Justin. I think this is what you would class, Arthur, as the, as the deluxe Dublin bus. Well, certainly in the double-decker range, anyway, <laughs> Justin. <laughs> I suppose, Arthur, I suppose one key thing I get across is, look, we can see this heifer, a good square back in, but this one here now, much more muscly, probably what a lot of farmers or, or some farmers are considering going down to produce for the live export market. But I suppose it's important to point out the pros and cons of both, Arthur, or both routes. Maybe you just want to take us through this heifer first of all and, uh, and our breeding. Well, she's, she's by, um, she's by the, the Belgian blue bull. We have Joker, J-O-K is the AI code, and she's from a black limousine cow, this one, Justin. Again, like you said, the pros and cons of both heifers, they're as different as night and day, really. Yeah. Um, the, the blue one that we're discussing at the moment, um, she'd be classified as very extreme with muscle in the back end, which we'll see in a minute. And there's, there's a major fear factor out there, Justin, mm -hmm. from producing calves from heifers like this, mm -hmm. and indeed cows like this going forward. But I think when they're crossed with the proper sire, that it's not a major issue at all, and you will result in ENU grade calves from stock like this. And I suppose, Arthur, it's important to, to point out as well, the management of the cow, heifer and the cow in the run-up to calving is important. We've covered it earlier on in, uh, in the section of calving the cow, but it's important that you have the cow in the right condition score and the heifer in the right condition score coming up the calving. From a suckler cow, from a commercial suckler,